And here we go. Hey YouTube, what's going on? JT's Run here, and welcome to another edition of After the Movie. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the sequel to The Mummy from 1999, The Mummy Returns, starring Brendan Fraser, Rachel Weisz, Odette Fair, Arnold Vosloo, and in his film debut, I believe, Dwayne The Rock Johnson as The Scorpion King, which... Then afterwards, it would lead to the spinoff, and then the three other shitty sequels after that, but whatever, let's get to the point. So, Mummy Returns. I remember when this movie came out, I don't remember the first movie, I didn't see the first movie till like, home video, and then afterwards, I was hooked. Then The Mummy Returns was coming out, and I remember there was this big event movie, it was like the picture, it was like the big event movie of that summer, and I couldn't wait to see it, unfortunately, I had to wait till DVD, but I still had my DVD, and yeah, I, I liked The Mummy Returns, it was a pretty solid sequel. Um, I haven't seen it in a little while, but from what I remember, like, the first two acts are really strong, maybe even stronger than the first movie, and then the third act is where it really kind of goes downhill with, <laughs> there's one thing you can't forget about this movie, and that's the CGI Dwayne the Rock Johnson <laughs> Scorpion King monster. It's been a while since I've seen it, so I'm about to pop this sucker in, and, um, I'll let you know what I think about it again after the movie. So, here we go. And here we go again. Hey everybody, JT's Reborn here, and I just finished re-watching The Mummy Returns, and I'm here to give my thoughts on it. So, it's been a while since I've seen this movie, but after re-watching it, I was still entertained. Um, it's not quite as good as the first movie. I think the first two acts this, like, in some ways surpassed the first movie. Like, the first, like, 50 minutes, I'm like, I'm into this thing, man. I'm like, oh, this is actually, like, better than the first then after his son gets kidnapped and they have to go kind of on the adventure portion, it's fine. But then it like really takes a dive when they get to the desert or not the desert, the, uh, the oasis. And we see the Scorpion King and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, this is the worst fucking CGI I've ever seen. Like in a big budget movie. I mean, look at this thing. This is total dog shit. This is unacceptable. How can you green light your movie with this, how do you not go back for reshoots? <laughs> it's embarrassing. I mean, it is fucking awful. I mean, why not just have the rock in person? I mean, you ha you cast the rock as the Scorpion King, Haku Masente, and this is it. That's the best you can do. <clears throat> Man, I tell you what, fucking. <laughs> Let's go over the plot of this movie really quick, and then just kind of like you know, break down things and talk about what I liked and disliked about it. Like, definitely dislike the CGI Scorpion King. And, like, there is way too much computer-generated imagery in this movie. It's like, oh, look at what we can do. I mean, I can understand for some of the sequences. Like, they do recreate kind of like the sandstorm scene for the first movie, this time with a wall of water. I understand using CGI for that. And I guess for Anubis' army, yeah, I mean, they're kind of like these, like, giant cat-looking creatures, these, like, with, like, gold things on them. I'm like, I guess I can understand that, but why? Why, fucking why do you have to CGI this dog shit Dwayne The Rock Johnson, like, monster, have scorpion monster? <laughs> it looks so fucking bad. It's kind of hilarious, actually. Unbelievable. Like, you greenlight that shit. Oh, I mean, if, if there was one thing I could, like, major th change in this movie, I'd go back and I'd reshoot that whole fucking ending. I'd make it to where it's like, no, don't use a scorpion, a literal scorpion king monster. Just, or maybe how about the rock morphs into a giant scorpion that they have to fight? Just something better than that shit. I'd rewrite to where, no, you have to face the rock via combat, because he wasn't, you know... As you can see in the Scorpion King movie, he's an expert fighter. I mean, that would have been more entertaining, and it would have, like, tested the hero's limits, but in a different way. So, yeah, um, let's cover the plot of this. So, years ago, we find out, like, long before the pyramids, there was the Scorpion King. He had a campaign to conquer the entire world, and basically, he was successful for the most part. And then, like, all his armies died, and he, like, pleads to the uh, Egyptian god Anubis, who vows to give him, like, control over his armies in exchange for his soul. Then the Scorpion King finishes his quest to conquer everything, and Anubis is like, well, quest over, bye-bye. Ah! So, he loses, so, the thing that allowed him to control was, like, the bracelet of Anubis, and 
yeah, so basically the Scorpion King's there, and then 5,000 years later, he factors into the plot again. So that was the big flashback in the beginning. And The Rock plays the Scorpion King, and, you know, he would play him in, like, the future movie. And, you know, The Rock's cool. It's it's the start of his, like, acting career, so he's not quite as seasoned at this point. But, you know, he's fine for what he is. Hakuma Sente! I mean, I always remember that line. I, granted, it's, like, the only line he, like, has in the beginning. But it's still cool and all. So... Yeah, anyways, we cut to, like, years later, it's, uh, it's about, like, t I want to say this movie takes place just over, like, 10, 11 years after the first Mummy movie, where we have Rick and Evie, they're, like, exploring this temple, or whatever, and they come across the bracelet of Anubis, they're also with their son, and, yeah, we found out that if you put on the bracelet, it shows you the pathway to Amsher, which is the oasis, which is where the pyramid is, which is where you find the Scorpion King, or whatever, to awaken him, and you're given seven days to get there, so, because, like, once you put the bracelet on, you can't get this fucking thing off. So you're given seven days to get there, otherwise you're going to die. So, yeah, so the Scorpion King, this is the year of the Scorpion King, so they can bring him back. But we find out that there's these worshippers, like, this cult who worships Emotep, led by this British dude, and... Patricia Velasquez, you know, Anoxin, the re this this girl who was the reincarnation of Anoxuna Moon, played by Pat Patricia Velasquez, and basically she knows everything. She has like all she retains all the memories from her past self, and they're there to bring back Emotep so they can take him to Amshara so he can fight and kill the Scorpion King because he's you know the only guy tough enough to do it. And so when you kill the Scorpion King, you have the you have the option of sending his armies back to the underworld, or you get the option to control them and rule the world. And that's what they wanted to do. So the Econos are, you know, swept up in this adventure. They got to save their son who gets kidnapped. Um, Odette Ferret comes back as Ardeth Bay. Ardeth Bay, Ardeth Bay, Ardeth, yeah, well, however you pronounce it. Jonathan's back. Uh, Arnold Vosloo is back as the mummy. Pretty much most of the core cast members are back, except for fucking Benny, which still disappoints me. I know, I know he dies at the end of the first movie, but... Betty was so entertaining, and I just fucking miss Betty. I mean, Betty's such a slime ball, but he was, like, one of my favorite parts of that movie. So, yeah, they go on this adventure, and they come to the conclusion, and then they have to, you know, they end up saving the world and all sorts of stuff, which is pretty predictable. But, like, the CGI monster is just so goddamn terrible looking. I mean, CGI, I can understand using it for certain areas, even for, like, the little mini pygmy mummies scene, but... Yeah, it's like, for this for me in this movie, it's like the last, like, 30 to 40 minutes will really kind of drag on. It's not as interesting as the first half, and you probably could have done some cutting here and there and saved yourself some money. Like, this movie could have been cut down by about, like, I want to say, like, 10, 15 minutes you could cut down in this thing. It's not necessarily needed. It's, it's not, like I said, this movie, it has some things I like about it more than the first movie, but the third act is definitely, like, a huge step down compared to the first film. It... The Scorpion King just looks fucking terrible. I mean, so they bring Emotep there, and, like, when he's set to fight the Scorpion King, his powers get taken away, and he's like, oh, no, you gotta fight him as a mortal. Why not just have it to where the Rock is there in person? You have to sword fight him or something. And then we get this, like, this spear. We find out that there's, like, this... Jonathan just happens to be carrying around this fucking spear thing, earlier in the movie, which is the weapon you conveniently need to kill the Scorpion King. How he got it, I have no idea. Why it ended up in his hands, I have no idea. But he has it. And then they end up using that as a way to kill the Scorpion King. Literally, the movie spells it out to Fraser. He Like, Fraser, it turns out, like, he has, like, this, mark, this, like, sacred marking that shows, like, he's a warrior that could kill the Scorpion King. And the thing that just bugs me about it, like, he literally is walking, 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 and he's just like, oh... The spear, me, you got the tattoo in there. Like, oh, so that's how he beat the Scorpion King. Why would the Scorpion King have this in his, you know, his uh, pyramid? Uh, I mean, I guess it's not necessarily his choice since he is uh, part of, like, Anubis' army. He didn't necessarily build this pyramid. Anubis did. It just, just kind of blows my mind in certain areas. Huh, excuse me, I'm kind of tired at this point. It's been a long freaking day. So... Yeah, like I said, action sequences are good for the most part. Emotep still has a pretty grand presence to him. In the end of this movie, though, like, they kill um, 
Emotep dies, knocks in the moon, like, kind of abandons him, and he's just like, you know what, there's no point in me existing anymore. So he falls down to, like, this pit of, like, you know, like, he, he goes straight to hell, and never to be seen of again. And, yeah, and then Anax in the moon gets killed by, these, like, scorpions and beetle things. Those beetles sh from the first movie show up again, like, the very beginning, like, oh, those fucking beetles, man. I mean, yeah, disgusting. Um, yeah, what else do I say? Sorry, I'm kind of, like, scared thought here. It's it's pretty late. Well, I mean, not necessarily, like, really, really late, but I'm, I'm just tired at the moment, so. Uh, what else can I say? Jonathan's funny. There's some cool action bits. Benny is missed in this movie. The CGI rock looks awful. But there's still some fun to be had with it. I mean, if you're looking for, like, just a fun popcorn movie, I'd say you can watch The Mummy Returns. Uh, after this movie, though, we wouldn't be getting, like, another Mummy movie until about 2008, so it'd be, like, seven years later. However, like, the next year after this, like, we got the Scorpion, we got the prequel centered around the character of the Scorpion King Strong the Rock, and I'm not, and then we also got, a, like, three unnecessary sequels to that that all went straight to video, and I've never seen those sequels, so I can't necessarily judge them, but I guess my thoughts on the first Scorpion King movies, I remember liking it, but I haven't seen it in about, like, well, like, ten years, so I don't know how it necessarily holds up. I mean, I own the movie, but I'd have to, like, rewatch it to see if I still find it entertaining or not. I remember a lot of things about it. I remember he's an Acadian warrior, and... Like, he fights a bad guy named Memnon, he's got the sorcerer or whatever, and he's like, I've come for the sorcerer in your head. So, yeah, it's been a long time, but I still remember clearly about the movie. Michael Clark Duncan's in it, too. And, yeah, I'm curious to know what it took for that character to get from, like, where he was at the end of that movie to, like, the mummy, because he's, like, really ruthless in The Mummy Returns compared to his character in The Scorpion King. He's more likable in that movie, but what are you going to do? But, yeah, I don't really plan on reviewing that series anytime soon. So, yeah, I guess this is going to wrap up this video. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching it. I hope you enjoyed me talking about The Mummy Returns, and we'll be back again tomorrow as we dive into the end of the Mummy trilogy with Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. The series takes a whole new direction, and, yeah, that's that. But, yeah, um... I'm just going to cut the video here. So thank you all for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to comment, like. Tell me in the comments below what you thought of the Mummy Returns. And peace out.